Axel's garage. Today we're in Axel's kitchen again because you guys asked for it, the dogs asked for it, and we're going to do another cooking video. And this time it's my take on pulled pork barbecue. And I know there's pulled pork barbecue is like a lot of recipes where everybody has their own certain way of doing it. And depending on where you go around the country, it's cooked just a little bit differently and prepared a little bit differently. And, or as they say in the South, we, they fix it differently, right? They fix it differently. But um, this is my take on pulled pork barbecue. It's not my absolute regular go-to recipe because we're making it for a, a massively bigger crowd. We're actually making it for the high school concession stand. Um, we're doing a special pulled pork this weekend because they have a cross day. And we're going to smoke some pork. And so, anyway, what happened is I told the guy that was going to get the food orders for the concession stand, I said, get me the, the pork shoulder. And there's two in one vacuum seal package. They, they have it right there on the left side. I told him everything. And he, and he went in there. And I didn't specify what I wanted. So he actually picked up a double uh, of the pork shoulder, which is the picnic ham. And I wanted... The Boston butt because the Boston butt is the, the pulled pork pulling kind of kind of pork shoulder. Now the, the difference is the picnic ham is the the front part of the shoulder going down like the arm a little bit, and the Boston butt is the back side of the shoulder where the scapula is. So what we're gonna do is, and then and then he went back and he picked me up two Boston butts. So what we're gonna do, and I only know this about the picnic ham because I screwed up when I first started smoking stuff back when. When did I start smoking stuff? When my wife was in the hospital giving birth to the twins, I went out and bought a smoker, and I started smoking ribs and barbecue and brisket, and the first time they had this picnic ham on sale, and I saw pork shoulder just like the guy that went to the store, and I bought that, and then I put that on the smoker, and I used that for my pulled pork, and I had a tough time pulling it. And, you know, I came to realize that the Boston butt is the kind of meat you want. So being he bought this picnic ham, what I did learn over the years is that with proper prep and uh, the, the right amount of time in the smoker cooking it, you can get it to pull apart. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix two Boston butts with two picnic hams, and we're going to make pulled pork out of that. That's going to be um, two back shoulders, two front. This is like a, the whole upper half of a pig. I wonder if they're related or if they came from the same thing. I don't know. Anyway, nobody likes my jokes or anything. Maybe I'll tell our biggest fan, Nick. Did you see a picture of Nick and his new sweatshirt? Let me show you a picture of a local high school kid named Nick and the sweatshirt that he went out and got made up all on his own. Here it is. Now, how's that for a fan, right? Listen to what Nick says. Subscribe to Axel's Garage. So anyway, we got our two... Oh, right, two meats. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these open in the sink let, so that the blood cannot get all over the place. And I'm going to prepare our rub. So I'm going to open these up, go let them drain in the sink, and we'll talk about how we're going to rub them down to get them ready to go in the smoke. All right, so we took our, we cleaned the sink up, and we took our two, uh, well, four, actually, pork shoulders, two butts and two shoulder, and we opened up the vacuum seal because they are kind of, kind of bloody, and we just dropped them in the sink and let them drain themselves off. I don't rinse them or anything, I just let them drain off. Alright? And then we go with our rub for the pork. And this rub is going to sit anywhere from overnight to up to two days usually is what I do. Get down! Alright? The um, the smell from the open pork shoulder will drive your dogs nuts if you have a dog running around the house. So now we got to prepare our rub. And the rub is, it takes, it, it really does two things. It it seasons the meat and it also helps to start and breaking it down. And my rub is equal uh, amounts of garlic powder, onion powder, or I actually like the granulated garlic better instead of the garlic powder. And if you can find the granulated onion, I like that better than the powder, but if you can't, you can use the powder. So onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, or a spiced paprika, or a... Uh, a smoke, a smoky paprika they make, or a chipotle paprika. Those are real good. And black pepper, a lot of black pepper. Not too much salt. We just don't use a lot of salt when we cook. So you know, a little bit of kosher salt and brown sugar. And you could use light brown sugar. You could use dark brown sugar. It, it doesn't matter. But the brown sugar is is a must. 
I am. Okay. And mix it all together good in a bowl. You know, uh, the brown sugar sometimes get clumpy, so mix it all up. What we're going to do today is um, someone had given me a whole uh, bunch of these jars of different kind of rubs, and they're all called something a little different. And what I did was I just found one that has similar ingredients to what I was looking for just so I could use this stuff because these pre-made rubs, it's like this one is for something specific and, and we got like 20 of these jaws that we've been using and this one where the ingredients are, it's salt, paprika, black pepper, um, onion and garlic. That's perfect because that's what I put in my, in my rub. So I'm going to use this, I'm going to add um, brown sugar to it and I'm also going to add a little Oregano, and the reason why I'm going to add the oregano is because this is Greek oregano that we are never going to use this whole thing of Greek oregano somebody gave to us from a um, like a Greek specialty shop. So I'm going to use some of this because you know it doesn't really matter. You're seasoning the meat, you're letting it sit with that rub on it, which helps break down the tissue a little bit so that when you smoke it and it's all done, you'll be able to pull it apart real nice. Ready? All right, so I'll take this, they actually call it blackening bayou blend. And based on what's in it, I don't know why it would be any kind of blackening by you blend, but just judging from the smell, it smells exactly like the pork rub, the rub that I usually use. All right, and then I'm going to take some of this brown sugar. It's a little brown sugar really stinks unless you get the granulated brown sugar, but like the regular brown sugar, light, dark, it doesn't matter. It, it's hard after, after just a little bit. This is a brand new package, never been opened. So I am going to try to mush it up as best as I can. I might put it in the microwave for a couple seconds just to soften it up. And then we're going to use a whisk to sort of mash it all in and get it together with this rest of these seasonings here. All right, so 45 seconds in the microwave, and this has softened up pretty good. Give it a little bit more of a mush, and then I'll get it open, just put the bag open, and dump it in with the rub. So with the brown sugar in our bowl, grab a whisk. What I'm thinking is this seasoning here in this can isn't going to be enough for four shoulders. So I'm going to look through my stack of other cans, find something with uh, a similar ingredient. I, I bet a lot of them are pretty close. And yes, I was able to find one. This one has salt, white pepper, onion, garlic, paprika. Okay, so we got salt, onion, garlic, paprika, celery seed, and sugar. Sugar we got going in here. Um, white pepper, we could always put white pepper in. White pepper's okay. Um, you're going to add black pepper. The other one had black pepper in? Um, yeah, the other one had black pepper. So we got black pepper and white. Hey, we don't discriminate here at Axel's Kitchen. So I'll dump that one in too, and this looks like about enough to get me going uh, for the amount I'm going to need to rub these uh, four Okay, shoulders. so for those of you who are my age, you'll know what this is, alright? For the younger crowd that watches, this is a potato masher. This is how you mash potatoes when you're making mashed potatoes. So. I'm going to use this just to further break up that brown sugar. And I will move the camera. All right, so, so I'm going to take the potato masher or whatever you call it. And I'm going to use it to try to break up that brown sugar as much as I can. And then when you're done mashing, a whisk, and that will help you break it down even further. Okay, and you can see there are a couple big chunks of brown sugar that didn't crumble all the way, but for the most part, it's a, it's a nice blend of everything. Alright, and that's it. Real quick and easy, that's our rub. 
All right, so I'm starting off with the two picnic hams. The picnic hams have that, you know, where they, they collar down to where the, uh, I guess the humerus would go in. And uh, it sort of looks like the, the big ham from the Tom and Jerry cartoons. Remember that, you're old. But anyway, we leave the fat cap on, both the picnic ham and the Boston bun, because that's a self-marinating thing. But with the picnic ham, in, in order to break it down a little bit more, when you're going to put it in the smoker, for pulled pork, what I do is I just took a knife and I kind of pulled the fat cap back and cut as I went, um, trying not to cut into the meat too much. But I just want to flap that main part of the fat cap back. And I did that on both of these, right? And the only reason for that, I'm gonna still flap it back over when we put it in the smoker. It's gonna go in the smoker with the fat cap on top. And the only reason why I wanted to do that is so that I can get some of this rub, all right, right in onto the meat rather than onto the giant fat cap. We're gonna put some on the fat cap as well, but we wanna we want to get it a little bit closer to the meat like that, and then we put the fat cap back over, and we'll do the same thing. And don't be, don't be stingy with the rub. All right, we'll take that, and we're going to flap that right back over as well. And then I'll take these, and I'm going to turn them over. And they are going to live in this pan until they go in the smoker, which is going to be um, about a day and a half away. All right, so now these two are ready to go in the refrigerator. We'll cover them with uh, either aluminum foil or plastic wrap. I like using the plastic wrap better because it holds all that moisture in and really lets the rub penetrate the meat and start to break it down. So we'll move this out of the way and we'll go get our two Boston buns. And what we'll do with our excess rub that's left in the bottom of these trays when we're putting it in the smoker is we're going to take that rub, we're going to put it on top of the fat cap and that's going to, when, as that fat breaks down, it's going to get the flavor from that rub and it's going to self-marinate these porks as they're in there. Okay, so everything rubbed down and rubbed down good. Take your extra rub, pour it on the top. All right. The rub is going to act like a marinade. It's really going to get into that meat. It's going to start to break it down, especially if you leave in the refrigerator for a day or two. So this is Tuesday night for us. We are putting these in the smoker on, actually it's Wednesday night. We are putting these in the smoker on Friday morning. They're going to smoke all day Friday morning. And then uh, this pork will be ready for pulling um, Saturday morning. And we will be serving Saturday afternoon. So what we have is our four porks, we're just going to take them, I'm going to cover them with plastic wrap, and we're going to put them in the refrigerator for that, uh, I guess, day and a half, that they're going to sit in the refrigerator, soaking in this rub, and especially when you put that plastic wrap on it, the, the aromaticness of the rub is really going to get into the meat and penetrate, and trust me, it works really well. I know I'm a northerner, but I do make halfway decent pulled pork, and it's really easy to make too. Um, and this is how we're going to start. Like I said, I usually don't use the picnic ham. I like to stay with the Boston butt, but because the guy bought them, we're going to use them all. Um, they look real good here, and we're going to cover them up, and we'll be back when it's time to put them in the smoker. All right, so it's been 36 hours, which, depending on where you live in the country, is a day and a half or a day and a night. But 36 hours later, listen, anywhere 24, 36 hours is fine. I have the smoker set up here. I use an electric smoker. Um... I feel that it just gives me a more consistent temperature. I have done charcoal smokers, uh, and I also have used my regular grill with indirect heat 
for making pulled pork. You can really do it anyway. I just got the best results with the electric smoker because the box is completely sealed up and you can put that water tray in the bottom and keep your humidity up. I, I really believe that keeping the humidity up in your box is going to yield you your best results. What I do is I put the water pan in there and I go in the bottom of the refrigerator and gra grab the apples and the oranges, even grapefruits, just any fruits that are starting to get soft and overripe and they're too soft to put them in the kids' lunch box when they go to school, so I'm going to use them in the smoker, and that's what I did, and I'll show you a picture of what that looks like now. All right, so I cut that fruit up, I laid it into my water pan, and I covered the fruit with water, and when I check it about every three hours or so while I'm cooking it, I might pour some more water into the water pan if some water evaporates. I want to keep that water pan full so that I can get a good um, humidity in that box, like I said. Uh, I'm going to use apple wood chips, just commercially available apple wood chips. I have used um, hickory. Uh, I don't use mesquite for pork, but uh, the apple seems to work great. It gives it a nice light but smoky flavor, and I like using the apple with pork, uh, or actually with pork shoulder when I'm making pulled pork specifically. So I got my temp set at... Um, 195 degrees, yeah, that's a little a little on the low side. I know that people uh, a lot of times will do pork shoulder at around 225 to 250. I like it at 195. I'd rather cook it a little bit lower, a little bit longer. It makes it a lot easier to pull apart when you're all said and done. And this is going to go probably 10 to 12 hours. So it's uh, about 7 o'clock in the morning now, and 7.30, we're going to get that pork in, and I'll move the camera, and you can see what we're Well, of course, we can't have Axel's Kitchen without a little... Exhaust idling on the background. That's the big dummy getting ready to go to school. But anyway, nope. Get away. Remember, this stuff smells real good, so keep the dogs away. Go play with that. All right, we have uh, our two shoulders. Now, these are our two Boston butts. They've been sitting in the refrigerator for 36 hours with that rub on them, and that rub is really soaked in well. So I warmed up my, my smoker. Okay, you're going to open it up. You can see in the bottom of the box there, I have my water pan with my cut-up fruit in it, filled up with water. That's going to keep my humidity up. All right, and I'm just going to take these two, these two shoulders, and I'm going to put them on the racks. And there's no neat way to do it. So you just dig in with your hands. All right, they're going to go on the racks. Put the fat side up right in the middle of the rack. I'm going to put, one's a little bigger than the other, I'm going to put the bigger one on the bottom, because the bottom does get a little bit more heat, that's where the, the uh, heating elements on the bottom. Alright, I'm going to take that one there, okay, and put that right in the middle of the bottom rack, I'm going to slide that in. Alright, so once you get them in, Close up your, your box, make sure your temperature's set, and just forget about it. I'm going to check it about every three hours just to make sure I still have water in that tray. All right, so we're about three, three and a half hours into it. Uh, what I did was when I first put it in and it got up to its 195 degrees, I loaded up the, the wood hopper with those apple wood chips, put them in, and then probably about an, an hour and a half later, I wasn't real uh, strict on it. But when I thought of it about an hour and a half or so later, I gave it another load. And so I've given it two load of wood chips, and now it's about three and a half hours. I'm going to check it, and all I'm really checking for is to make sure that my water pan still has water in it, and that they're cooking evenly. Um, if sometimes the heat on the bottom will start to, to, to really darken up that bottom one, and sometimes you rotate them. But if I'm going to rotate them, I usually do it about halfway through the cooking. We're about a quarter of the way through, so I probably won't rotate them. I'll just check that water pan and just look for anything unnecessary. Uh, and that's really it. And then I'm going to close it back up. I'll put another load of wood in it and let it go for another three and a half hours before I check the water again. Pretty much open it up. You can see they're cooking good. That water pan is still full because it does catch a lot of the drippings as well. Um, but it's keeping the humidity up. You can feel it as soon as you open it up. You got the humidity up. Get out of there. Come here. Come here. No, come. All right. The dog is going bananas from the smells, um, but they're cooking good, and that's it. That's all you want to check. Close it back up.
so you don't lose all your heat. Make sure it's nice and tight. I'll put another load of smoke in, and it's good to go for right, we're at the 12-hour point. We're going to pull our Boston butts on, and we are going to put our picnic hams or picnic shoulders on now because they're going to take longer to cook. I'm still going to cook them at 195, but I'm going to let them go 14 to 16 hours because it's a tougher cut of meat, and I'm going to keep it low, nice, low and slow, let it cook all the way through, and it'll really break down that meat, and it'll pull apart nice. It won't dry it out because we're cooking it so low, and we're keeping that humidity up inside the box by keeping that yeah. water, uh, water tray full. Still recording? Yes. Well, I took the butts out and I put those other ones in and what I'm going to do now is pull it. I let it sit for about an hour and a half, two hours just so that it's not so hot to the touch. You got your fat cap on the top. A lot of times you can just use your hands to pull that fat off. You don't want to take meat with it, you just want to get the fat off. A little bit of fat in with the meat is okay. You just don't want to have unnecessary fat because that just makes it too greasy. And pretty much you wipe it off like that with your hand and you can push a lot of the fat off. Your aim isn't to get it all off, all right? And it's still hot. This is it's been a, it's been almost two hours and it's still hot, all right? So that fat cap just slid right off. A lot of it disintegrated and it self marinates the meat. Now you can do it however you like. I pretty much take a fork and I just start tearing it like this. And you see, 12 hours on the smoker at 195 degrees. This is cooked. And it's cooked well, but look how juicy it is. I mean, it's really wet and juicy, and it just starts to fall apart. It's just been my experience that when you cook it less, even though it's done, it's a lot harder to pull. This just makes it real hard to pull, it real, real easy to pull. It just starts coming apart like that. And I just keep ripping it with the fork. Some people will take a pair of tongs and just keep twisting with a pair of tongs. This gets real hot. Like If it's hot, just put it to the side and let it cool a little bit if it's real hot to your hands. And I'll work around the outside where it's a little bit cooler and just keep pulling it apart until you got every bit of meat off of any bone. Okay, so my wife just came home and tasted it. And I know a lot of you are probably saying, hey, what does some northerner know about making pulled pork? Well, I'm a food guy, so whether it's northern food or southern food, I pride myself in it. So, she just picked it some. What do you think? It's delicious. All right, so our two picnic hams went in. They went in overnight, and they cooked for about 14 hours or so. I let them cool down for an hour, pull them apart. Just a reminder, the picnic ham is not your preferred uh, shoulder. It's going to be the Boston butt, which is the back side of the shoulder. That's what you want. The two butts that we had were boneless, so that was really nice too because that was all meat in there. Uh, the picnic hams have some big bones in them. When you cook them enough, the meat falls right off that bone. They weren't dry. They were juicy. It's just not as easy as a, a meat to pull apart. It's got a lot of connective tissue in it. Remember, when you're trimming that fat off, you don't have to get like a, you know, like you're dissecting something. A little bits of fat here and there are okay. If it's going to be served warm, that fat's going to melt back down. Because the pork is really juicy when you're pulling it apart, and when it cools, it's going to start to dry up a little bit, and that's just because the fat's solidifying again. But we're going to serve it warm, and it's going to be juicy. So after you get it pulled, what you're going to want to do is put some kind of sauce on it. So I like to make my version of an Eastern Carolina sauce, and I put that on everything uh, with pulled pork. I'm going to put it, even though this is a, a catering thing that we're doing, um, we're going to put it on everything, and we're going to serve the sandwiches with regular barbecue sauce on the side. So if they want it Eastern Carolina style, it's naked. And if they want to put some, you know, a thick red or a heavy barbecue sauce on it, we'll have that there for them to put on it. I like it just with the vinegar sauce. I found that because some of my kids like vinegar sauce and some like a heavy barbecue sauce, you put that vinegar sauce on it, it's real good. And if you want to want it with a heavy barbecue sauce, you put that on top and 
you don't even realize the vinegar sauce is in there. It just adds to the juiciness of the pork, and it, and it helps it keep a little bit, too, uh, especially if you, you're making a, a large quantity and you're going to keep it for a little while. It does keep about a week in the refrigerator. You just heat it up. It, it gets nice and juicy again. When I make these um, these big tins, and these are full-size you know, catering tins, and two shoulders fill one up. And, you know, if, when, I, when I do it, I'll put the, the Carolina sauce on it. I'll put it on my propane grill with a, with a, with a foil cover, just, just with a little bit of flame, just to keep it warm, and serve it right out of there, and that works out good. So, for my version of the East Carolina sauce, or the Eastern Carolina sauce, and they claim that, that in the east, it's more vinegar, and as it moves through to the west side of Carolina, it adds a little bit more tomato, a little bit more tomato, a little bit more tomato. But, I don't know. So, my version, and I don't have any exact measurements, what I do is I take a bottle of apple cider vinegar, and I'm going to put about three quarters of the bottle in. smoke. Alright, I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid smoke. And the only reason why I add the liquid smoke is because we're serving this the next day. And that, that improves the smoking. And sometimes that, that smoky aroma that you get from it when you just pull it off, just the flavor is there, but the aroma dissipates a little bit. The liquid smoke gives you a little bit more of an aroma. Then I'm going to take some hot sauce. I like Texas Pete. You can pick whatever hot sauce you want. I recommend against Tabasco. Because Tabasco is very overpowering, and it's got a distinct taste, Tabasco. Tabasco. So I like Texas Pete. I'll put in, I don't know, maybe that was a tablespoon worth, maybe a little bit more. All right. A little bit of spicy mustard, just a little. Nothing crazy. And some ketchup. The ketchup is going to give it a little color, and it's going to help uh, bring it all together, sort of thicken the whole mixture. Not too much ketchup either, you saw that. And then I'm going to take some, I usually would do this uh, separately, but I have one of those things that people gave me that you saw earlier in the video. This one is um, sugar, salt, and pepper, um, and it's got a little onion and garlic powder, which is fine. I normally don't put the onion and garlic powder, it's just sugar or brown sugar, um, salt, and pepper. If you want it spicy, you can put a little cayenne in. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit in. All right, and then I'm just going to take a whisk, and I'm going to mix it all together. You pretty much want to break up that ketchup and mustard and get it to all liquefy so it's all one consistency. So you whisk it all up, and you have a, a nice, man, it smells nice. And if you really want to check it out and see how it is, just take a, a little piece of the pork you pulled, dip it in the sauce, and try it. That's the best indicator. You're going to take this, you're going to pour it over your pork, you're going to mix it up, use your hands, mix it up real good. And what I am going to do, because I have the two Boston butts and the two picnic hams and two separate trays, I'm going to get a third catering tin, and I'm going to take half the uh, Boston butt and half the picnic ham, put them together, and mix them up. This way you get uh, a better meshing of all the flavors and textures of the meat. That's just me. Bring this over, and this is two shoulders. This is how much I got out of two shoulders pulled. Now you might have to do this one and a half times, two times. It should be so that the pork is wet, but there's not a puddle of, of this runny vinegar sauce in the bottom of the pan. You want the pork saturated, though. And pretty much the best way to do it is with your clean hands. Get it mixed in, and what I'm going to have to do is this is going to need at least another half. So I'll make another bowl of sauce, and I will put at least half in here and get a good moist and then I'll do the tray from the Boston butts. I'll mix them together and tomorrow it'll be serving time. But once I get this all done and looking good, I'll give you a little shot and we'll close it out.
Okay. This was two uh, full shoulders that uh, we put in here. We wound up doing two of my mixtures with the three quarters of a container. This is a quart. So three quarters of a quart of uh, vinegar. We wound up doing two solid mixtures uh, to get it to the right consistency. Pretty much once you get it all in there mixed up, just, you know, you can always add a little salt and pepper. You can always add a little bit more sauce. Um, you can always add a high sugar content, depending on how you like it, but just take a clean fork. <laughs> Nailed it. All right, and taste it. Now, serving on warm is important because it, uh, it, it really, you know, it, it, it re-energizes uh, the little bits of fat that are in there and the fat that's in between the meat. It's almost like when you cook bacon, right? Cold bacon, it's kind of humpy, but then when you heat it up, it gets all juicy again. Same thing with the pulled pork. When you heat it up, it's going to get real juicy. Perfect for a sandwich. How we're probably going to do it tomorrow because we're not um, keeping the whole thing hot is we're going to use the flat top. And we're probably going to take a, a, a tongue full or two or three tongue fulls at a time, depending on how many sandwiches we're making. Throw it on the flat top just to heat it up. Right on a nice soft roll and good to go. My favorite is a little coleslaw right on top on the sandwich. Um, but we'll see what we're going to do. This is the first time we're trying this. At our local high school concession at Dad's Club Shack, we got a big event tomorrow, and the lunch special is going to be pulled pork barbecue, Axel style pulled pork barbecue. Let me show you what it looks like. Okay, you can see it's wet, but it's not saturated. It's got some nice texture to it. Um, the the meat really came out perfect. It's not dry at all. All right, what I will do tomorrow is I will make another batch of my Carolina style, and remember, it's, it might not be traditional Carolina style, it's my Carolina style. I'll make another batch, and I'll put it in a, in a squirt bottle, so that people can add some more if they want to add some more. And that's more. really what I like to do, is have some of that really, you know, the heavy, um, more western style barbecue sauce, with the, the Kansas City region, where it gets a little tomato based, and have a real nice one, usually one that's on the sweetest side, I do make a homemade one. I'm not going to make that for tomorrow. we got a sweet and smoky barbecue sauce for tomorrow. So if people want to put a thick barbecue sauce on it, they can. We'll take that Carolina style. We'll put that in a little uh, squeeze, you know, condiment squeeze bottle thing. So if they want to add more of that, they can. And, you know, try to satisfy as many people as we can. It's my take on pulled pork. It might not be your take. Um, give it a shot. It's really not hard. If you like to cook, it's not a ton of work. It is a little time-consuming pulling it and everything. But it's really not a ton of work. The electric smoker is definitely my recommendation for the way to go because you can cook them overnight. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll take that, those two Boston butts, we'll throw them in the smoker before we go to bed. When we wake up in the morning, we pull them out, we pull them, and we're good for that day. And you got nice, fresh pulled pork barbecue. Um, give it a shot. Hope you liked the video from Axel's Kitchen. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. And if you like what we're doing here at Axel's Garage, cooking, car stuff, Family stuff, goofball stuff, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.